So I kind of want to address what you and I were talking about first. Since we're working with the special journals, um, I, we spent some time discussing how they interact with each other before class. Can I just kind of go through a real highlight of it? Real quick highlight of it. <clears throat> right now we know we have a uh, general uh, ledger. And we know that we have a general journal. Talk to me. I can't see that. Okay, that's fine. I'm zooming in. So this is what we've historically worked with, the general journal and the general ledger. You wrote that here twice. I apologize, thank you. So we've added some new things to that. We've added a, the special journals, which are the sales journal, the purchases journal, Cash Payments Journal, and what was the fourth one? Cash Receipts and then it says Journal and Book. Cash Receipts. And then it says Journal. So those are the four journals, correct? Four special journals that we've talked about so far. <clears throat> we covered the sales journal last week in class. We also talked about the accounts receivable ledger and the accounts payable ledger. <clears throat> so the interaction of these and how you need to approach your transactions. In the past, we've taken a list of you know, our transactions, made a sale on day one, we bought a piece of equipment on day two, some customer paid on day three. And we've entered them in date order sequentially in the general journal. And then we post those to the general ledger. <clears throat> we will still have transactions that go in the general journal and that get posted to the general ledger every day. But what we're using now are these special journals where they get posted all month long and then we summarize it at the end of the month and we post those special journals to the general ledger, but we only do it monthly. And there's the key difference. So if you have sales, you put it in the special journal, the sales journal. If you have a return, it doesn't go in the sales journal, does it? It goes in the general journal as a return or a discount. The difference here is the return gets posted the day you the day it happens, the sales journal, or the sale gets posted to the sales journal, totaled at the end of the month, and that only gets posted once a month to the general ledger. Everybody with me so far? Yeah? Okay. On the other side of this, when a transaction gets posted to the sales journal and it's on account, Right? The, all these transactions are on account. <clears throat> that gets posted to the accounts receivable ledger for that customer. Remember the customer cards we talked about? Gets posted to that customer card every day. So if the customer comes in and wants to make a payment, you know what his ending balance is at that moment. If you make a purchase, you're going to post that every day to the accounts payable ledger so that we know how much we owe each vendor. And with the cash payments journal, you're making, you make a payment that to your vendors that will reduce your balance. So you post those every day as well. Cash receipts when your customers pay you you want to post those every day as well so that you know what their balance and accounts receivable is every day. You guys remember, these work a little bit different than the general ledger. 
In the general ledger, when we have a journal entry, let's say we do a journal entry and uh, January, <coughs> bless you, <coughs> January 1, we get, we make a sale. So we have accounts receivable, debit for say $1,000. Sales credit for a thousand dollars. If we were entering it in the general journal, that's what it would look like. And what we've always done in the past is uh, we post the accounts receivable account in our posting reference, showing that we've posted it to the general ledger, and we post the sales account showing that we posted it to the general ledger. Right? Everybody remembers this. It's all chapters one through six. Now you have something new. When you post this to General Ledger, it also needs to get posted to the Accounts Receivable Ledger. And you get a check mark here that goes with it that shows, yes, I've indeed posted it here. There's no account number because the customer doesn't have a General Ledger account number. You just mark it showing that you've indeed done it. Good? Okay, so that's the, the basics of how all of the special ledgers interact with the general ledger and the general journal that we've already got. Questions?